News First Newsline. Hello there, a very good evening and welcome to another edition of Newsline, of course, coming to you as always live and direct from our News First studios here in Colombo. The big concern among the general public of Sri Lanka right now is the state of the economy. In uh, the prices of essential goods and other goods have been increasing at a rapid pace. Is this really the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic? What's the situation like in other countries? Uh, we know that even before the COVID-19 pandemic hit, Sri Lanka's economy wasn't doing uh, quite well, at least. But uh, as, as far as the opinion that the COVID-19 pandemic made matters worse for us Sri Lankans is true, what are the other factors that really contributed to uh, the state of the economy uh, that it is in today. To discuss these matters and more, we've got uh, a former director of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka and a visiting fellow at the Advocator Institute, uh, uh, Mrs. Roshan Ferreira. A very good evening, madam, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Shalin. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, madam, let's start off with some issues that are closest to the hearts of the general public, um, be they from any class of society. The price of fuel uh, was increased. Now, there are calls from various factions uh, uh, calling the government to reduce fuel prices. This is not the right time to increase fuel prices. But we must understand, when we speak of the government, it's not a separate entity. Sri Lankans have this, um, uh, this, uh, mis this wrong thought that the government is a separate entity, the people are a separate entity, um, that uh, we are always against the government or the government is supposed to give us this, but when in reality the government is us, a government uh, of the people, by the people and for the people. On this issue of fuel prices, is there really a possibility that the government can look at reducing these prices to the level that was? Yes, Shalin, thank you. So I think um, you, you hit on a right point actually. Because the fundamental problem that Sri Lanka has faced, it, it, it's over decades, it's not only recently, but now it has become even more aggravated, is we've had a twin deficit problem. We've had basically a fiscal deficit and an external deficit. And people have really, we have basically what that means is that we have been living beyond our means, hmm. consuming more than we produce, hmm. um, uh, spending more than we earn. Hmm. Uh, and unless we address the root cause for these problems, um, um, we're not going to be able to address this problem. Hmm. Uh, it's like putting a Band-Aid on somebody who's, had a, um, uh, who's, who's ruptured an artery. Uh, finally, what is, it, it's not going to work. Finally, the patient is going to have cardiac arrest and, and, and die. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's very similar to that. Basically, households and businesses uh, uh, do the same thing, really, right? So hmm. we, we, if you spend more than we earn, um, for a time, we can you know, continue with that lifestyle or that hmm. operation. Uh, and, and maybe you can support it because we have some savings, we can borrow from other people, hmm. financial sector or the money lenders and so on. But it comes to a point uh, beyond which no one is going to even lend to us, no one is going to do business to us, with us. Uh, so at that point we have to put our house in order. And I think this is one, one area where we're trying to put our house in order. Hmm. Uh, but, but it's not the only thing. I think there is a much broader picture that we have to, we have to look at it from a broader picture mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is just one sort of li little bit of band-aid that we're trying to put mm -hmm. to, to address this huge problem that we're face facing right now. But we know that the government as they came into power uh, back in 2019 right after the presidential election uh, e even though uh, the uh, United National Party at the time had a majority in parliament they handed over power to the opposition at the time as President Gotabe Rajapaksa won the presidential election and one thing that they did as they came into power was reduce many of the taxes that were imp uh, imposed by the previous government. Uh, nation building tax, uh, value added tax, taxes like that. Um, would, did this also contribute to the entire situation that we're in right now? Absolutely. I think uh, it, 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 this, this problem didn't start, as I say again, this problem hasn't started just in the last few years. This mm. is a perennial problem that Sri Lanka has faced and that's why we are in, in, this pro in the situation we are in now. Uh, if you look at uh, continuously, we, uh, Sri Lanka's GDP per capita has been rising, mm. but the revenue from taxes has been declining. It, mm. it is an anomaly. In every country in the world, if your per capita income rises, your GDP per, uh, your, your tax to GDP ratio should also increase. Mm. But we find that Sri Lanka has one of the lowest 
we are basically in the bottom 20% or 10% of those collecting taxes in the world. Hmm. Uh, we have one of the lowest personal income tax rates in the, hmm. in the, in the world, or in, sorry, in the region. And we have one of the highest thresholds for personal income taxes. Uh, ultimately, who benefits from these taxes? Who are we trying to benefit? Who, who are we trying to uh, help from this, uh, with these taxes? So I think one of the first problems that we need to address, uh, because I, when I started, I told you that we have this twin deficit crisis, which mm. is the deficit in the fiscal and the deficit in the external sector. And, and, and in order to address the fiscal deficit, I think one of the things that we have to do is immediately put our tax policy Right, and I think that is what economists, policymakers have been asking uh, for a, for a very long time. Hmm. Uh, I, we we have to put our taxes right, uh, otherwise because lower taxes today. I mean, we can rejoice because today we have got lower taxes, hmm. but that means that the costs to us are going to increase tomorrow, and that's what we are seeing now because there is nothing called a free lunch. Somebody has to pay for what we are doing. Hmm. Uh, so. We, we have to put the tax system uh, right. And but I believe parliamentarians uh, will beg to differ with you because recently there was a, a minister of the government who came out and said that uh, uh, on, on the subject of importing luxury SUVs for MPs, he said that this is not going to cost the people of Sri Lanka anything. This is not going to affect uh, the, the local economy here in Sri Lanka because this is, is, is a credit line that we have and we must use it in time, otherwise it will be a waste of this credit line. Uh, what's the reality behind this argument, this thinking? So I think whatever credit line we have, I think that's the other thing, it's, it's the expenditure side as well. So I talked about the revenue side, it's expenditure. We also need to be mindful of what we spend our expenditure on. We need to spend on things that are productive, that will actually increase the productive capabilities of the country, increase production in this country. And, mm. and the other thing is that we need to, uh, whatever expenditure should also help the, the vulnerable uh, so people in, 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 in our society. Mm. Um, I'm not sure whether luxury vehicles uh, falls under these categories. So I think we have to really have a very strong uh, focus on public finance management. Um, because uh, unless we do that, I'm, we, we, we're already spending, as I said, beyond our means, mm. or living beyond our means. Mm. Uh, we need to get that right. Um, and and, uh, and so, uh, so and, and I don't think uh, it's right to say that the credit line, finally a credit line, we've got to pay, pay back, right? And, and we know what, what situation we are in, in terms of our debt situation. Uh, so finally, all this will add up into our debt. And, mm. and that feeds into interest payments. And as you know, one third of our recurrent expenditure, expenditure is on interest, which mm. is non-productive because it's something that we have done, we, expenditures that we did in the past. Hmm. And, and our debt repayment, our premiums that are coming in the next three years or so would amount in billions of US dollars, uh, somewhere over 20 billion, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Madam, we've got a message from one of our viewers saying, uh, uh, saying I like your statement on s that spending more uh, on our earnings. Why can't the government set an example by cutting, on, cutting down on uh, unwanted expenditures? Uh, where we see, I believe, uh, what this viewer is referring to is even when it comes to the construction of a simple road, uh, there were instances where we even add on our news where a simple one kilometer road, uh, there is a huge banner put up, there is a huge ceremony organized where people are invited, uh, it's celebrated just for a small kilometer piece of a road. And at the end of the day, the sad part of the story is uh, even this section of the road uh, isn't made properly. It's substandard. There are deals involved underneath. Now, this is not uh, a single, blaming a single government that has been here in Sri Lanka. This has been a perennial issue in Sri Lanka. At the end of the day, uh, wh what, why do you think the government doesn't really cut down on their expenses, their administrative expenses, maintaining so many public representatives? Why do you think that is not happening? So I think I'd like to put the question back to the people, actually. Because um, I, I know we all wait for the budget, and we all you know, st sit in front of our television sets waiting to see what are the budget, uh, what, what, what does the budget hold. Hmm. But usually what we're looking for is what are the goodies that the budget gives Concessions. us. Concessions. Concessions, exactly. We are not looking at how is the government actually spending its money. And then after the budget is finished, we never go follow up on how they've actually spent their money. There is no accountability. And I think so the people really need to be more mindful about how their representatives are spending their money. And I think a problem with this is, again, we go back to taxation. It's because we, we don't realize because our, our, our personal income taxes, our income taxes are so low, uh, 
there is no sense of accountability of you know how are your taxpayers being uh, tax do, uh, tax rupees being used mm. um, a, and the rest of the public because you don't even realize that you are paying such high taxes through your value added taxes your uh, indirect import taxes. taxes the indirect taxes because it is indirect right so you don't feel it mm. uh, so there is no sense of uh, holding your representatives to account for how they spend the the taxes that they raise and i think your money the money of the people not their money exactly exactly so i think it is the responsibility i think of people to hold their representatives accountable for how they spend money uh, moving on even on this uh, decision to import uh, luxury suvs to sri lanka um, the argument put forward by government mps those in in favor of this decision was that you know we are struggling as mps we don't have the means to visit our people we don't have proper vehicles to come to uh, parliament in some of us even come to parliament in buses but isn't the reality that all of the duty free permits that these parliamentarians have received over the past few years have been sold off there was a court case filed in re this regard as well uh, so 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 those might be technical issues but I, what i want to f what i want to really focus on is um, uh, we need to look at the macro picture I mean, finally, what is our end game? What, what are we really looking for as, as the government, as, as uh, the civil society, as individuals? Uh, what we want is to improve the well, welfare and well-being of our people. Hmm. And how do we do that? Is it, um, so, so do we uh, see how, who, who can take a bigger share of the existing pie, or are we trying to increase the size of the pie? Um, and I think the, 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 the answer we give to those questions would determine the kind of policies that we are looking for and the kind of focus that we have as policymakers, as legislators, and as, the, as, as individuals in society. Well, you spoke about concessions given by the budget and that people are waiting and watching for uh, the budget speech in parliament. But however, uh, how long do these concessions really last? Because the, budget, the budgetary policy that the government presents is rarely, if not never uh, maintained throughout that fiscal year. Uh, we saw a certain tax policy being introduced by the government, but then there were so many changes made to that tax policy, which resulted in a huge loss to Sri Lanka as well, as far as the sugar scam goes, uh, when it comes to the uh, reduction of sugar taxes from about 50 rupees to a, a mere 25 cents uh, within the course of a very short period of time. Now, all of these losses are suffered by the government, which means these losses are suffered by you. So when we speak of uh, Sri Lanka's government it's, it's, and, and government finances, it's very important that we understand that this is our money, that these representatives, people who we have elected and sent to the legislature of Sri Lanka are dealing with. We will cross over to, the short, to a short commercial break and we'll be back with more interesting facts on the other side. Stay tuned. You're watching Newsline live. News first, Newsline. Welcome back. Uh, you're watching Newsline live. Uh, we're in discussion with, of course, a former director of the central bank and also a, a visiting a fellow at Advocator Institute. Uh, Madam, getting back to our discussion now, uh, we highlighted um, certain issues in Sri Lanka's um, economy: policy inconsistencies, inconsistencies in tax policy and um, various other issues. But of course, uh, this small half an hour period of time is not really enough to discuss all of these matters in length. But um, something that uh, our, our viewers are always uh, pointing out to us is the fact that instead of just pointing out issues and complaining on different things that the government is doing wrong, what are the suggestions that you have that uh, we can put forward, that we can come together and really work, leaving aside criticism and going towards constructive criticism? What in your view, do you believe that the solutions to these issues should be in the short term and in the long term? So, so as I said in the, in, at the beginning, basically we have to try and live within our means. Mm. Uh, that's the first, uh, uh, that's a fundamental uh, policy that we have to adopt, that we have to live with our, within our means. But how do we do that? Um, I, I think it's, it's not that we... Uh, unfortunately, uh, right through our, our 50 years or more of uh, our history in, uh, uh, with, with the IMF, we have basically gone for 16 programs in the IMF because mm. 
they are the land of last resort, and hmm. every time we have fallen, you know, fell beyond our, or, or basically exhausted all other means, hmm. we have had to go with them. Um, and I, I think uh, this, this time is no different. Hmm. Uh, certainly, we can try to put a house in order, and I think we are trying to do that, but it's kind of a tinkering. We are trying to do, you know, a few things here and there. Put band-aid on. Uh, put band-aid, exactly. It's like putting a band-aid on. Uh, but we need to come up with a much, it, it, it's a more macro plan. Hmm. Uh, and, and it's not that our policymakers can't do it. Uh, they do have the resources, they do have the capabilities of coming up with a, a sort of an overall macro plan. Uh, but sometimes, just like, as I said, as a household or a business, if when you go to a bank, uh, basically, uh, they, they monitor you. They monitor mm. whether how you're putting your house in order, how mm. you're turning around your business. So it's a, And it's how you are going to use this money. Are you going to use this money to get your house in order, fix the local economy, or purchase luxury SUVs exactly. so that your ministers can, so, uh, as they say, go and visit their constituents? Yeah, so you need someone to monitor uh, your commitment and progress mm. of your commitment to turning things around and to, and, and to make sure that you're sticking to your commitments. Mm. Uh, and also, it, it, they need to bring us back into a position where we regain co the confidence mm. of those we are doing business with. Mm. Uh, so that's the role that the IMF plays. And in situations like this, where there are so many stakeholders involved, I think this is something that is inevitable. Uh, but but uh, it, it, it's not just having uh, IMF in, 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 the, in the mix. Hmm. Basically, we need to be committed to these real, having these real economic reforms and addressing the root problems. Hmm. Because otherwise, we'll just go back into, the, the economy will keep going back into this vicious cycle, hmm. and we will have continuous IMF programs uh, like the 16 that we have had in the past. Hmm. Uh, we have uh, a comment sent in by one of our viewers. Uh, more than putting only the tax system right, I feel that the government needs to get its overall policies right. Is there any truth to this kind of thinking? So definitely. I think, as I said, there are two sectors, the fiscal sector and the external sector. I think, uh, we, as I said, we need to make sure that we earn uh, more than we spend. Hmm. And the same way, we need to produce more than we consume. Hmm. And that's where exports come into, sec in, in, hmm. into the mix. Hmm. And we really need to focus on exports. I mean, we are tinkering with uh, exchange rates. We are tinkering with uh, import controls and trying to... Um, to, to, to address the, the, the Deficit. deficits and the problems in the external sector. But the fundamental, the only way in which you can do it is by producing more and selling more. Hmm. And, and we know that Sri Lanka has a very small market. Um, so the, in terms of size, in terms of packet per capita income. Hmm. So we really need to export to the world. And so this is, we, re, we need to focus on these fundamental issues hmm. and get those right. Tinkering here and there, as I said, is just... When we speak about uh, some of the more unsound policy decisions, one thing that uh, people are grappling with right now, of course, is this, uh, is this ban that they've placed on the import of uh, inorganic fertilizer. Uh, now, as the general public would obviously know, something grown naturally is definitely better than something grown with artificial chemicals. But uh, we are in a day and age where these, uh, the seeds that are used for these productions are even uh, tailor-made to suit the, uh, the fertilizer uh, or inorganic fertilizer in a way. Such a drastic shift, these, these inconsistencies, inconsistencies in policy, that is what I'm really speaking to you about. Is this really healthy for Sri Lanka at a time when we are looking at foreign direct investments also, on the other hand, as a lifeline for the current situation in the country? So, so I think this uh, leads to a very uh, sort of a overall problem, that we need to be looking at, at the um, you know the, the 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 research, the the analytics. You need you need to be analyzing these problems and trying to figure and and come up with solutions based on uh, fundamental um, theories and 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 policies that uh, that the experts come up with. Hmm. You can't just make uh, you know f a random ad hoc decisions. It it must be thought through. Uh, it must be backed by research. Hmm. Um, so it's not only this issue, but I think in in every issue that we mm. face, I, I think that is something that we mm. all need to uh, recognize and uh, take. Uh, We've had certain policy decisions by the government to ban certain things. We had the ban on cattle slaughter in Sri Lanka, uh, not happened as yet, not uh, put into, uh, not activated, not done practically. Uh, then there was a ban on uh, palm oil, import of palm oil, but huge backlash. Then 
that decision was reversed. Now there's this, uh, but the government is steadfast in their approach, saying that we can uh, move on with these decisions. But speaking on uh, attracting foreign direct investments to Sri Lanka, how important is policy consistency? So again, I think I go back to the question of exports. Uh, if we are to increase our exports, if we are to diversify exports, diversify markets, I think that's a huge topic that is, has come up for discussion recently. We need to be able to attract FDI. And, mm. and that requires, uh, we need to be, be able to build the investor confidence. So we, to, to attract these non-debt creating uh, uh, flows, mm. uh, requires policy consistency. Uh, it's not necessarily low taxes. We, we require the right skills, the mm. labor force with the right skills. You need the right infrastructure, so you need to, need to spend and to build the right in infrastructure which is required uh, for those who will be doing, the, uh, to, who will be coming in The here. education system in the country? Exactly, education, uh, it might be the digital infrastructure. There mm. are so many things that you need to look at. Uh, but again, uh, what I want to focus on is you need to have uh, a single mindset of, you know, what are the focus areas? Uh, you can't be battling on all fronts. You need to be, you need to uh, be focused on what are the things that need to be addressed, and then put all your um, uh, efforts into making sure that those are uh, done right. Uh, one final question, Madam. We're in the final few minutes of the show. Uh, one of our viewers uh, 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 raised this query. Uh, why are we not following a system similar to uh, that in Australia? tax the super rich heavily and use it for the poor so that the gap between the rich and the poor is made smaller. Um, so, so this is a fundamental pro, uh, issue about uh, why governments actually uh, operate or why do they um, uh, operate in an economy. Uh, so one of the things is really to, to help uh, the private sector to flourish to uh, to enforce rule, the rule of law. And the second one is actually to make sure that people have uh, a, a steady income right through their life, life cycle, hmm. uh, so which means that they, you need to provide some kind of social protection. And I think that has come to the fore, particularly in this uh, pandemic, where we've seen so many households and businesses uh, who, have been, uh, who have been vulnerable hmm. uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, and and uh, because of the inadequacy of the fiscal space or not having the fiscal space, um, making it difficult for the government to really address mm. all the issues uh, that, that the vulnerable populations are facing. So I think that is right. The government, uh, th that is definitely a, a reason why you need to put your fiscal sector in order so that you can create that fiscal space to protect, uh, if one is to provide fiscal stimuluses when there are shocks or external shocks like the pandemic, mm. and also to protect uh, vulnerable businesses and um, and households when they uh, fall uh, into uh, because there are all sorts of risks that people face. And if Sri Lanka had a proper policy, if we had dealt with these matters in house before, we would have had a better situation right now, even in providing the care that is needed by those who are suffering. Uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Pereira, former, gov uh, former director of the Central Bank and also visiting fellow at the Advocato Institute for joining us on our show and clarifying these matters to the general public. Of course, uh, at the end of the day, uh, the buck uh, stops something with the president, but with the general public, because at the end of the day, uh, our representatives that we send to the office of the president, to the office of the prime minister, to parliament, uh, wherever, we are the people who vote in these uh, representatives into power and it is our sovereignty that they exercise. So at the end of the day, uh, the buck stops with the general public. So be mindful, of course, of the current pandemic situation. Uh, stay at home, stay safe and take care until we meet again. God bless.